Hello everyone, my name is Tian Harteng. I am originally from South Africa, but um, the last uh, 20 years I've been living and working in Southeast Asia. I spent 14 years in China and the last six years in Vietnam as a ESL teacher and an IELTS instructor. For the past four years I have been employed by the AMA English Training Center in Tam Ki, uh, a small rural city uh, about one hour's drive south of Da Nang. I am the author of three IELTS textbooks, um, an English Chinese glossary containing 12,000 words according to the IELTS topics, um, a book about speaking part 1, 2 and 3 and a book about writing task 2. In this video we are going to focus on a topic from the speaking book and we will be dealing with part 2. In this video, we are not looking at a specific topic uh, in the IELTS exam, but at uh, something that I believe will help students to avoid many, many problems, mistakes in um, speaking as well as in writing. Generic words or generic terms are nouns that name a class or a group or a family of things and not the specific individuals in that group. We call these words generic terms because of biology. In nature, if uh, the parents, the dad and the mom, both have black hair, they will give the gene, the black hair gene, to their child and the baby will um, most probably have black hair. Now in nature we can see this uh, as well. Um, a hen and a rooster will give the chick the, the gene of feathers. The chick has feathers because the hen and the rooster have feathers and they have given um, this gene in their DNA to their chicks. So how do we know something is a chicken? Um, because the chicken family have some specific genes that distinguish them from other birds and other animals. The hen and the rooster have given the genes to the chick and these include first of all that um, it's a bird, in other words it has feathers. Secondly, uh, chickens have succulent meat which people and other animals like to eat and the third gene that the chick will receive from his parents is that the baby um, in this family comes from an egg. Now this knowledge from nature we can use um, in all aspects of our life. For example, we have a family called the clothes family. In that family there are individual members, dress, skirt, pants, shorts, jacket and so on. What is the gene that they have in common? Why are they in this family? Actually there are three genes that we can identify. First of all, it's something that people wear to cover themselves because we are shy to go uh, around naked so that's why we wear clothes. 
um, it will protect us um, from the cold and from the heat and sometimes we wear it to display our wealth or our beauty um, there are other reasons why people wear clothes but um, these are the genes the things that um, will make us define something as clothes so the point is that the name generic words um, came about because it's all about the gene if we know what is the gene in a family we would be able to um, use that word correctly the reason why I have um, why I'm always um, telling my students that this is very important is that there are many 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 words in English that are only generic words in other words they don't tell us about anything about an individual these words only tell us the name of the groups another illustration just to show how wide this um, principle goes in life is the stationary family um, the gene of the stationary family is that it is things that we use in an office in a school in a university even at home um, to write to draw um, and to um, communicate on paper um, that is the gene of these um, individuals so how do we know that they are in this group um, if they have this gene in this group we have individuals like pen pencil ruler eraser and rubber here are some more examples have a look and see if you agree with me on what is the gene that we can identify the families with um, I will just give you the first um, one in my view cattle means it's a large animal it has four legs it's a mammal um, you can find it on the farm it has um, edible meat and some cattle um, the females produce milk the members will be cow the mom bull the dad calf the baby and we also have an ox which is another story so have a look at these words groceries vehicle and meat and see if you can understand how to identify these um, groups or these families some more examples I have repeated uh, stationary here for the reason that um, I have a study tip um, there are two words in English that sound the same but the one is spelled with a E and the other one with a A if you think about pen and pencil you will know that you should spell it with an E if you think about car you will know it has to be spelt with an A and here I have a better description of the gene of this family and also some more uh, members cutlery and crockery are also two very uh, interesting uh, families uh, the last examples just to show you um, how the genes work we all know the word furniture but have you ever thought of what is the gene that would um, make something 
fit into this family. We know that a chair is furniture, but why? Uh, and have a look at my definition there, my gene. Um, then we have uh, the peculiar situation where one word actually means two different families. A hardware can have something to do with computers and another hardware can have something to do with things that we use at home. We have to go back to nature uh, to understand the following uh, point and that is that there are what I would call mega families. They are very very large and in those families we would find um, smaller families. For example, um, there are two big families in nature, the animals and the plants. Let's have a look at the animals. There are six very large families that we could call animals. Mammals, the gene of a mammal is that the mother has milk and the baby will drink from the mother. Um, we know uh, mammals well. Uh, we ourselves are mammals, dogs, cats, whales, dolphins, bats, and so on. Another big group are the birds. Um, one of the most um, obvious genes are that they have feathers. They don't have fur. Um, the fishes, they don't have um, uh, lungs like um, uh, birds and uh, mammals and reptiles and amphibians. Uh, they have gills with which they breathe and on their outside they don't have feathers or fur, they have scales. Insects, we know something is an insect when it has six legs and um, it has no backbone. Actually, there is a very large number of other strange animals that don't have backbones, but we know insects very well. Reptiles, they are cold-blooded. In other words, the blood will um, have the same temperature as the um, uh, outside, the environment things like turtles, crocodiles, snakes, and lizards. And then we have amphibians, which are animals that are able to live on land as well as on water. So these are six very, very large uh, families, and we will have to pay more attention to them. So as I mentioned, we have six mega families in the animal kingdom um, and one of them that we looked at were birds and now we can see that there are smaller families within this very large group. For example, there are the eagles. Um, the gene of an eagle is that it's a bird that would only eat something that it has killed by itself it will never go and eat something that is already dead. And within this group, there are uh, smaller groups, and in those groups we will find individual species. For example, we have fish eagles, which um, is not a very large group, and there are only a few individuals in that group. The owls, um, they are different and they are in, in a different family because they have faces like humans. In other words, their eyes are both in front of the head, not like a chicken where the eyes are on the side of a head. And that is why there is so much superstition about owls, is because many people feel that they have the faces of a human. 
Now, in this group, in this family, there are smaller families. For example, there are the pygmy owls, very, very small birds. And in that family, there are only a few individuals which would all have the same gene. In other words, they will be very small. Um, another group are the doves. Um, my definition of a dove is a bird who only eats seeds. Um, we have the pigeons, the doves, the quails, and the francolins. And in these groups, uh, you can find individuals. The crows, um, they are omnivores. In other words, they eat anything. Um, and there are big three big um, or three families in this big group and they each have individuals. Penguins, you know, um, they are special because they are birds that can actually, uh, some people say, fly underwater. And then we get to our familiar friends, the chickens. Um, another uh, gene of a chicken is that they can't fly and they also have groups, for example, the silky chickens. They are not really for eating, they are for um, uh, decoration. Uh, and there will be some individuals in this group. So, why is this important when we are uh, preparing for the IELTS exam? Um, there must be a practical application that we can use. First of all, let me say that um, if you give a common answer in the IELTS speaking or IELTS writing exam, you must expect a common score. The only way that you can get a high score is when your answer is different from all the other students. Um, and that is what will make you stand out for the examiner and will improve your, your score. Let's have a look at an example. The examiner asks you, what's your favorite animal? If the student says dog, that cannot get a score more than three um, because it's really not saying anything. You could um, improve your score by saying, I like the dog family. Um, that would make a big difference. And then if you really want to uh, excel, you could answer by saying, I like the dog family. My favorite breed or individual is the husky. Another example of how we can use the knowledge that we have of generic terms or generic words to improve our score. For example, the examiner asks you, do you help your mom at home? Um, the uh, beginner student will say yes, and the score would be very low. Um, uh, more intermediate um, student would maybe answer yes, I often wash the dishes. That's not uh, a bad answer, but the advanced students who want to ha really have a high score would answer yes, I often wash the dishes, including crockery like bowls and cutlery like chopsticks. With that, we get to the end of this presentation. I hope it will give you a new insight in how to study and prepare for the IELTS exam. Um, I would urge you to watch this video more than once. Uh, we have covered a lot of material. And um, if you um, repeat it a few times, your insight will be much better. 
and I hope you have also got the message that IELTS is about general knowledge. If you don't have a wide general knowledge in English, there's no way you can achieve a high score in the IELTS exam. Um, they simply um, cover everything in life and if you don't know uh, what they are talking about, there's no way you can um, have success. So, um, how do you improve your uh, general knowledge? Uh, read as much as possible or listen to um, videos or presentations um, and so uh, get more and more knowledge day by day. Everything of the best in your endeavor and I hope you are highly successful. I would like to mention that all the books that I have uh, published are available free of charge. Um, these are electronic versions that are suitable for any device and you are welcome to download them. Uh, to find a link, uh, contact me on Facebook or on YouTube. Simply search for Christian Hutton and you will get be able to get hold of me. With that, we get to the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And in light of the pandemic, my wish to you and your loved ones are please stay safe. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in your bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and goodbye.